And the, it's, it's the love that goes into it that makes That's the right. difference. Glad you enjoyed. All right. It is 8 o'clock. Om Amen. Om Amen. Om Amen. Oh, beloved Lord, may we come to know your holy presence. May we come to abide in your holy presence. May we come to see all that is as proof of your holy presence. May our lives become a prayer to thee. Om Amen. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace be unto us and to all beings everywhere. I don't see June yet this evening. I hope she I hope she manages to join us. Yeah, maybe. I do too. Yeah, I hope she's feeling well. Yeah, well she her son is coming to visit her tomorrow. Oh, well, maybe they're getting ready maybe then. Maybe she's just busy with all that if we don't see her. I tried calling her earlier today and I the phone just rang, so um uh, wasn't able to reach her. She might have been working in the kitchen. She could have been. She does. She does still cook. That wonderful lady. She does indeed. Okay. Well, we're studying the poems of Saint Thomas Aquinas, and uh, this next one is quite remarkable. Heidi, have you got the book open in front of you? Yes. Can you read, can you read Kapak's Universi? Oh my gosh, I can't say it that that good. <laughs> well, it, it it I have I have just a little Latin background, not okay. much. So that's Latin. Okay. Okay. Capus University. See, that's how I say it. <laughs> okay. Capus University. Capable of the universe are your arms when they move with love. And I know it is true that your feet are never more alive than when they are in defense of a good cause. I want to fund your efforts. Stay near, stay near beauty, for she will always strengthen you. She will bring your mouth close to hers and breathe, inspire you the way light does the fields. The earth inhales God. Why should we not do the same? This sacred flame we tend inside needs the chance of every tongue, the communion with all. As capable as God are we. Again, Capax University. Capable of the universe are your arms when they move with love. And I know it is true that your feet are never more alive than when they are in defense of a good cause. I want to fund your efforts. Stay near beauty for she will always strengthen you. She will bring your mouth close to hers and breathe, inspire you the way light does the fields. The earth inhales God. Why should we not do the same? This sacred flame we tend inside needs the chance of every tongue, the communion with all. As capable as God are we. What a beautiful affirmation this poem is. Anyone else have anything to say about it? 
Oh, good evening, Swayam. Good to see your sweet face. Good evening, Brother Shankara. Good evening, everybody. Hello, Bart and Katarina. Hello, namaste, everyone. Namaste. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering who he's talking to. Is he? I assumed he was talking to and therefore about God in the beginning, but I'm not sure whether he's talking to God or the reader. Well. I can only answer for myself. I always felt he was talking to the reader. Okay. That's why I said there was such an affirmation. Yeah. But, you know, as always, that's not the answer. That's just the answer from here. Well, the he uses the talks about being capable in the first sentence, mm -hmm. and in the last sentence, mm -hmm. as capable as God are we mm -hmm. and so i i think you're right i think he is talking to the reader because these are these are kind of amazing things that one would godly things one would be capable of mm -hmm. capable of the universe mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean what more is there Mm -hmm. in the universe <laughs> the universe and more <laughs> I love the lines I want to fund your efforts mm -hmm. I want to fund your efforts in other words, bring what I have and give it to you. And then he says, stay near beauty for she will always strengthen you. She will bring your mouth close to hers and breathe, inspire you the way light does the fields. And of course, though he can't say it because it was heresy at the time, he's talking about Mary. He's talking about the Divine Mother. That's the beauty. For she will always strengthen you. She will bring her mouth close, your mouth close to hers and breathe, inspire you the way light does the fields. It's the Divine Feminine he's speaking of, of course. It seems from here. And then um, how beautiful are the lines. The earth inhales God. Why should we not do the same? Anybody else have a word to say about this one? I wanted to I wanted to share. Oh, my my Latin is so rusty, but if I look it up, chapax universi can be taken as a verb, which means to to contain all. Except it doesn't have the sense in English. It really it means the big big all, and then you know you have capacity, the ability the ability to do something. And also the capacity of the Divine Mother to contain us all within her love, etc. That type of sense of the hugeness of, of uh, Chapex, of capacity. Chapex, not Capex, Chapex. Oh, yeah. Well, in, in the, that's the way a priest might pronounce it in church Latin. Oh, good. That's it. Yeah. I, I Yours is yours is rusty. Mine is not only rusty but <laughs> significant. So, oh, uh, but it has the sense of of capacity, meaning the ability or 
in my in my life in the Catholic Church in the Orthodox Church, the Divine Mother, or even just Mary, the figure is considered Theotokos, the God bearer, and she's also the God container that we relate to in human forms and so. Anyway, I'll. Well, that's that's wonderful. I'm glad you brought that part. That's good. I really. She's always. So. Oh, sorry. She's always willing to fund our efforts. By the way, the Divine Mother, absolute. Yes. Beverly, you had something. Yes, I really love. I really love the concept of inspire you know breathing mm -hmm. as as the earth you know breathes god right that's really and so then can we mm -hmm. you know to breathe in god and then the final affirmation which is so <clears throat> so much the thread that runs through uh, Aquinas is this absolute unqualified affirmation, as capable as God are we. Pretty, pretty strong statement and yet so there it stands as capable as God are we. Anything else before we move on? Bart, are you uh, up to reading the next one? Does God understand himself? Absolutely. I. Mm -hmm. Does God understand himself? <clears throat> Does God understand himself? Not in the form of creation. For creation simultaneously exists and does not exist. How could that not be in a mind that is infinite? Thus God holds no one accountable, especially himself at all. If you had a dream in which someone broke into your house and stole a certain object, would you, upon waking and finding that item still there, call the constable? Not if you were in your right mind. And whenever God wakes in us, his, our thinking becomes clear. Nothing is missing. And how can he not forgive then what never really happened? and or what he caused. Does God understand himself? Does God understand himself? Not in the form of creation, for creation simultaneously exists and does not exist. How could that not be in a mind that is infinite? Thus God holds no one accountable especially himself at all. If you had a dream in which someone broke into your house and stole a certain object, would you, upon waking and finding that item still there, call the constable? Not if you were in your right mind. And whenever God wakes in us, his, our thinking becomes clear. Nothing is missing. And how could he not forgive then what really never happened, and or what he caused. And that's that's fascinating to me. It's in in his day that's completely heretical to the uh, to the church fathers that would be reading him, and maybe they would give it a spin and misunderstand what I think he's saying to us, but speaking about God's um, is a, God has a deliberate will where he wills something and makes it happen. And then he has a permissive will, but the, that idea of it, this is on a whole different level 
of God godding within us. God is a verb. Mm-hmm. And so I'll I'll mute myself now. No, 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 no. I <laughs> Bart, let's 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 stay with that. Okay. This business about creation simultaneously or simultaneously exists and does not exist. Uh huh. That's a concept that's very familiar to us in the tradition we follow over here, mm-hmm. but it's not very uh, it's not very familiar within the Judeo Christian tradition. Right. That creation both exists and doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. So does anyone else have anything to say about I mean this poem this poem depends on our understanding what is meant by that. Mm-hmm. How could that not be in a mind that is infinite? Mm-hmm. So does anybody else have anything to say about that? Because I think that this is, this is, because then the conclusion that he reaches immediately, as you say, is the heretical one. Thus God holds no one accountable, especially himself at all. Right. Which at the time, as you said, (laughs) you know, if, if they, if, if he hadn't been so revered and they had to take it so, uh hands off his attitude toward him that would have been uh-huh. gotten him the stake oh yeah absolutely so they said oh else? he's yeah, go ahead oh yeah he oh he's just speaking metaphorically but what what does that metaphor point to we're not going to get into that let's just leave it alone it's thomas aquinas you know <laughs> in yeah. those days so that kind of thing right any, anyone His, anything to say? And that includes you, Bart. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to mute myself, but I am not going to say anything more for the time being. So anyone else, please. Um, Brother Shankara? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that whole dream um, example so uh, appealing and actually practical. Um, so when I start, you know, my mind starts going in every which way and um it it helps to kind of remind myself of this that uh, to become more uh, um, self-accepting and Mm non-judgmental um because i mean this waking state is also a dream and when we wake up from that we know that nothing has happened i mean for now we have to have the faith but this particular poem and that helps to reinforce that on a day-to-day basis for me. Yes, indeed it does. Very clearly. And it's interesting that Aquinas reaches the same conclusion as St. Teresa of Avila because she says in her poem, Every Prophet's Name, it is only in us, that is creation, is created beings. It is only in us that God is so lost that he asks questions. I don't think I quoted that exactly right. Maybe somebody can look it up, but it's very close to that. So yes, we have the con- concept of creation uh, simultaneously existing and not existing, that it, it is a relative reality, but it is not an absolute reality. And that from the, from the standpoint of the absolute, it is a dream. Brother Shankara? Yes, Haima, please. When he said, and whenever God's, God's wakes us, wakes in us, his 
our thinking becomes clear. Does he mean our conscience becomes clear when he wakes in us, when God wakes in us? I was just thinking. Our conscience becomes clear? Clear. That is you, did you say conscious or conscience or consciousness? Consciousness, right. We, it, Nothing is missing. Our thinking becomes clear. Yes. So uh, th th my feeling is uh -huh. his, his our thinking. Okay. Remember, he starts with sure. God is uncertain and doesn't, doesn't know. Mm -hmm. When he wakes in us, mm -hmm. his our thinking becomes our thinking. clear. Nothing is missing. Right. So it's only in the dream. Yes. Mm, this is so beautifully put. It sure is. If you had a dream in which someone broke into your house and stole a certain object, would you, upon waking and mm -hmm. finding that item is still there, call the constable? Well, of course not if you're in your right mind. Exactly. And so we dream that something is missing. We dream this dream of missing the mark, which is what the meaning of the word, that's the meaning of the word sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, a, 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 a person who is uh, competing in an archery contest sins when they don't hit the bullseye. I mean, you know, by the use of that word, okay. they miss the mark. So this is this is the kind of thing as he he said earlier that you probably shouldn't or wouldn't tell a child. And how could he not forgive them what never really happened and or what he caused? Yes. So yes, our, our not only our consciousness is clear, but our conscience as well. Okay. This is this is the this is the primary construct from which this tradition over here operates that we are we are born in not sin but ignorance and so we operate from ignorance and that's where this poem starts god himself is ignorant in the form of creation Thank you, brother. Anyone else have anything? Yeah, I suspect that this poem was not well known in Aquinas' time. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted I wanted to share just quickly on it's page two seventy two. Just a, a couplet from St. Teresa of Avila. She says, what percentage of God is unseen? What percentage of the truth of him do we know? He led me to a place where only light existed. <clears throat> only in us is God so lost that he asked questions. Yes, that's, that's, it is Part of the poem, it. every prophet's name. Thank you mm -hmm. for finding it. Yeah. Please read it again because oh. it, it, it directly relates to this. Uh, it just ties it ties it right in. Okay, it's okay. She says, What is the relationship of form to the unseen aspects of God? What percentage of God is unseen? What percentage of the truth of him do we know? <clears throat> Truth, capital T. Mm -hmm. He led me to a place where only light 
existed. Only in us is God so lost that he asks questions. And that's so beautiful the way it ties in. I, as I read, would you read, Aquine, the, li would you read the lines at the end of that poem? The question uh, he asks and the way it's answered. Uh, the very, let's see, at the very end, mm -hmm. I said, I okay, I said to my Lord, this holy place have I entered. Is but your I, name? I, I have entered this holy place. I have entered. You said okay. you reversed the two words. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I said to my Lord, this holy place I have entered. Is your name the only key to this? And my Lord responded, how old do you think is existence? For eons of time, souls have been entering me. Every prophet's name is a key, as is every heart full of forgiveness and love. Every prophet's name, as is every heart full of forgiveness and love. Mm -hmm. yeah. Notice the word is not compassion. Not every heart full of compassion no forgiveness and that's exactly what god is what what aquinas is talking about here and how could he not forgive them what never really happened and or what he caused i'm so glad you made the effort to find that mark because these two poems do just tie together like, like threads in a tapestry. Anyone else have anything to say? Okay. Could you embrace that? I said to God, let me love you. And he replied, which part? All of you, all of you, I said. Dear God spoke, you are as a mouse wanting to impregnate a tiger who is not even in heat. It is a feat way beyond your courage and strength. You would run from me if I removed from if I removed my mask. I said to God again, Beloved, I need to love you, every aspect, every pore. And this time God said, There is a hideous blemish on my body, though it is such an infinitesimal part of my being. Could you kiss that if it were revealed i will try lord i will try and then god said that blemish is all the hatred and cruelty in this world could you embrace that i said to god let me love you. And he replied, which part? All of you, all of you, I said. Dear God spoke, you are as a mouse wanting to impregnate a tiger who is not even in heat. It is a feat way beyond your courage and strength. You would run from me if I removed my mask. I said to God again, Beloved, I need to love you, every aspect, every pore. And this time God said, There is a hideous blemish on my body, though it is such an infinitesimal part of my being. Could you kiss that if it were revealed? I will try, Lord, I will try. And then God said, That blemish is all the hatred 
and cruelty in this world. Compassion is possible, but I don't know how forgiveness, <laughs> I don't know how you reach forgiveness. Well, Beverly, thank you for being so honest. Mm. I mean, just thinking about the political situation in the United States in the last four years. <sighs> He's crazy, and I, for, you know, I have compassion for that, but I can't forgive him for what he's done. Well, and that's just, you know, one example. Yes. So if if forgiveness is is the be all, there's a lot of hard work one has to do to reach that stage. You know, it, it, there's, so it would seem, Beverly, but all of the great teachers, all of the great teachers have told us, including Aquinas here, just ask, what is he doing here? He's asking. All of the great teachers say, just ask for the grace and it will arise in you. So we can see it as hard work and there are paths that uh, involve a lot of hard work. Some people are bent in that direction, but all of the great teachers say, Christ put it so beautifully, My yoke is easy, my burden is light. And uh, so he says, come to me, all you who are, who labor and are heavy laden. And we find Aquinas here. <clears throat> asking and receiving. So, it is, there's no two ways about the fact that it's hard work to live in this world to be an embodied being in, in today's world. No two ways about it. That's why I think it's so important that we study these poems. That's why I made such an issue of this book when it was discovered. Because every one of these saints in one way or another, says the same thing that Aquinas is saying, that there is great freedom, great freedom and happiness in embracing it all. Um, Brother Shankara? Yes, dear. Um, I find the um, use of uh, or description that the blemish is an infinitesimal part, very um, consoling, because it seems as if um, we are exposed so much to the blemish part mm -hmm. that um, we have to like, especially in a broader um, scale, that we have to draw into our own personal experience and connection to see the, the, the beautiful part. Yes. Um, you know, not all media, but there's definitely influence of some media to go and pick these blemishes and blow it out of proportion. 
uh, that that sometimes gets discouraging oh does it ever and and the, you know there's no doubt that the horrors are there god himself and aquinas are acknowledging it but in terms of the infinite in terms of of the the as you said the possible expanse of our experience it is certainly not all of it and we can focus on it and certainly we should to the extent that we have there's any way we can be of service in alleviating it and and that means you know for some it means being politically active for some it means giving money for some it means giving service to uh, organizations that are are useful but in in the hymns to the divine mother titled the, called the chandi brahma the divine mother's son the creator aspect of the divine says mother this universe this all of all of this of creation is but an infinite, infinitesimal portion of yourself. So the good and the bad, the the is but an infinitesimal portion of the truth, as Bard pointed out in the last poem. The word truth was capitalized. <clears throat> and as Aquinas, the first poem we read this, e this evening was, we are capable of grasping it all. And this is what he meant by our arms move and our arms move, we're capable of grasping it all. But it is not an act of will, it's an act of surrender. Boy, I sure didn't mean for this to get to be a sermon. <laughs> Anybody else have anything to say, please? Brother Shekra, I agree, I agree, I mean, I agree with the Beverly, what she said, it's so difficult to forgive unforgivable people in this world. And I myself had the struggle then I deeply, when I thought about forgiveness, it is for my sake, not for others' sake. For me to get detached from that person, that issue, that whatever it is, then it just brought, it's almost like I had to think of St. Francis of Assisi, make me the instrument of peace where there is hatred, let me so love. You know, these are the things I had to repeat myself to really come to calmness and move on. This is going to be in the world, no matter whether we like it or not. Yes. This is going to be this. And Ima, you're so right. Forgiveness <laughs> is for us. Our sake, not so for other it, sake. It frees, it frees us from the torment. It detaches us from that other person or issue, whatever yeah. it is. Uh, I myself struggled like that, what Beverly said. I myself struggled in those times. Oh, yes, me too. Many of us struggled with that. I, I've, I've written many a poem about it. Yes, so it's, uh, it's mostly forgiveness. We get detached and then we can be peaceful, move on from there. So, we, oh, it, so beautifully said, Haima, thank you. It is a lot of work, a lot of practice, practice, practice with that forgiveness. It's the most difficult one. 
this is this is what I this goes to what I said earlier. We can we can approach it from that way, or we can ask for the divine being, the divine presence, sure. to share with us mm -hmm. its treasure in the form of grace. Exactly. And uh, and sure. they all promise they will. And so that's that's the conclusion that was reached from here. That's true. Thank uh, you. I'll I'll never I'll never solve the problem with this left mind just exactly reasoning about it. Right. It has to come from the heart. From the heart. It has to come, and that awakening that sense of presence and forgiveness is too limited a word mercy yes mercy that comes from the experience of that grace thank you brother shankar oh thank you Hyla. thanks you for bringing it up in that way and thank you also for being so honest yes brother shankar this is katrina yes i am <laughs> oh, it is. hello katrina Hello, I tell you, when that was read, that that that's a powerful poem. Yes. Because when I when I heard it, what came to mind is that, oh, we all want to love God, mm -hmm. and then it's like God is saying, well, okay, can you love the, can you love this blemish? Mm -hmm. Then he goes on and and it goes on and says okay, this blemish is the quote unquote, the hatred in the world. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Because what it's saying to me is that we wanna love God, but we don't want to love how God has designed things. Yes. Because if God is all, and, and, and you so beautifully tied the, the last two poems together, because the last poem said, oh, what is there to forgive? It, 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 it's unreal. And, and then I'm the doer. God saying it's unreal and I'm the doer of it all. And so if God is the doer of it all, then God is, is the doer of it all. And so at a deep level, it is it, 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 it pushes me to not only know and understand what we're what we're learning, but really to accept it. Oh beautiful. And, How and well said Katrina. The only way we can forgive is that we can accept it, accept, accept the teachings, and then we we will we will see. Yes, we can see that we can see the truth. Yes, it's just it, it's, it's just such a beautiful, a few words, but so it says so much to me. Yes, yes, yes. I want to share that. Thank you, Katrina, and and you're exactly right. And I, the, you recall earlier the word surrender was used. That I'll just add that to your word accept. You know, when we surrender to the truth of this is all the divine being and the divine doing. And, and suspend our tendency for judgment which is a left brain activity that is a, it, it allows us to limit things in such a way that we don't have to deal with them. That's what judgment does. Judgment is a way to keep reality at arm's length, box it up. I, I, I've got that taken care of. I don't have to think about it anymore, except that it just goes on being there regardless of what we, what box we put it in. 
So Aquinas deals with it in these last two poems, just head on. And I just love <laughs> the central portion where he says, uh, and this time God said, oh, no, no, no. Uh, all of you, all of you, I said, and dear, dear, God spoke. You are as a mouse wanting to impregnate a tiger who is not even in heat. It is a feat way beyond your courage and strength. You would run from me if I removed my mask. Now, I think we can take the attitude that Aquinas is telling us the literal truth of his spiritual experience. This is not metaphor. This is what God said to him. And it's so funny. It's so humorous. You're like a mouse wanting to impregnate a tiger that's not even in heat. How in the world are you going to do that? And then, and then Aquinas insists. He asks again. Mm. That's, that's where we sometimes run out of gas. I said to God again. Beloved, I need to love you every aspect, every pore. And this time, God said, there is a hideous blemish on my body, though it is such an infinitesimal part of my being. Could you kiss that if it were revealed? I will try, Lord. I will try. And then God revealed. He did the reveal, and then God said, that blemish is all the hatred and cruelty in this world. Of which, as Beverly very well pointed out, there is plenty. Though it's an infinitesimal portion of the infinite, it very much is in our face right now and it can just drive us crazy and it does so Carl, Jung. Hmm? Carl yeah. Jung and the psychiatrist said that um, I'm paraphrasing being in the world being involved with people uh, took more the energy than he had. So he had to have long periods of solitude. And I think that that's what most of us do to, you know, quiet our souls and detach from, from our judgment and the world and the noise and the pain and the what have you so that we can begin to feel um, the love and begin to feel God it is very difficult for most of us to feel God in the midst of <laughs> yes. in the midst of a noisy world <laughs> oh yes you're you're right you're young I don't know if it's the same place that you're talking about, but in one place I, I, I saw uh, Jung, maybe he was quoting himself, but it was a little video and a little filmed interview. And he was saying that after a serious, after a serious conversation, it would take him two days to recover. Yes. Two days of solitude to recover. He felt very deeply. Yes. And those of us and everyone on this screen tonight obviously is of that character. Yes. All of us who feel deeply, this world is, it's, it's a hard world. Shankara, I just wanted to kind of add here too that 
I've always said it's easy to love people who agree with you or are kind of like-minded. Yes. But it's not so easy to love people when they show their blemishes or they, you know, yes. uh, you know, all that kind of stuff that we're, that everyone has kind of um, spoken about here on this poem. Um, and the one thing that does help me, um, like you said, the left brain is, um, oh, I don't know. Um, when I can look at a situation a little more from a spiritual context, mm -hmm. I can detach from it. And I'm not like, yes, I'm a little bit of a news junkie, okay? <laughs> I'll admit it, um, and I like to know what's happening, and I like to get the facts and that kind of stuff. But you do have to detach, and you have to look at it in the bigger picture of things. Yes. And, um, and doing that spiritually for me, uh, listening, you know, like reading these poems and being here tonight, and you know, for many nights, helps me to do that and just to listen to other. Marianne Williamson is, um, I'm a big fan of hers. Oh, and, yes. You know, she ran for president. I supported her. And when she looks, the way she describes stuff, um, how it's happening and the reason and stuff like that, it really resonates with me. Yes. And I and I need to hear stuff like that to go, okay, <laughs> you know, yes. you, we're, you, we're at the cliff. <laughs> we're about to go over, but, you know, we're at the 11th hour, but, you know, there's, we there's still hope and this is what we can do, you know, yes. um, that kind of stuff. I, my soul needs that kind of stuff, you know. A amen, 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 sister. Yes. And Marianne Williamson is one of those, you know, she's one of the good ones because there are so many people that say she's crazy. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you probably have to be a little crazy to run for president of the United States, right? Well, that, and I just thought that what she did to bring that, to be able to bring that and actually be on the debate stages, right. you know, and, and say what she said, I thought, what guts, what chutzpah in, 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 uh, in uh, Yiddish terms, what chutzpah, yeah. you know, because... Yeah. And she's Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> so. A lot of people just said, oh, she's just crazy. Yeah. yeah, she's she's crazy, all right. Crazy like Aquinas. <laughs> right. And, you know, look at the day and the times that they were writing a poem like this. I mean, this is, um, like many of them, it's very appropriate for today's situation as, as it was for whatever was happening back then, I'm sure, you know? Yes. Well, Heidi, we've got time. Would you like to read the next poem, which again is one of Aquinas's? It shows his sense of humor. Okay. I just love this poem. Okay. Ducking. More significant than any act is the power, the impetus behind it. An ocean fish may gather enough momentum to leap into the air and may even fall into a boat and bite someone. But, tra but tracing that act to its source reveals the ocean as the cause. Our thoughts leap out of God. Creation took flight from his bow. Bow. From his bow. Behind every act is the beloved. He is the cause. The child blames others for their woes. No one can change the course of his arrows. That does not mean that one should not become adept at ducking. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of the way of that bow, right? Get out of the way of those arrows. So that, those arrows, right? Read it again if you'd be so kind. Sure. Ducking. More significant than any act is the power, the impetus behind it. An ocean fish may gather enough momentum to leap into the air and may even fall into a boat and bite someone. But tracing that act to its source reveals the ocean 
as the cause. Our thoughts leap out of God. Creation took flight from his bow. Behind every act is the beloved. He is the cause. The child blames others for their woes. <clears throat> no one can change the course of his arrows. That does not mean that one should not become adept at ducking. Yes, exactly. <laughs> So it sounds like he's saying that um, it's the intention that's more important, perhaps, than the actual act or what is happening. Yes. With that first sentence. More significant than any act is the power, the impetus behind it. Yes. And I, yes, I do love the humor there with the fish, you know, jumping into the boat. Be careful, it might bite someone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sharks are known to do that. Sharks, there are instances of sharks actually leaping into boats. And they, they don't intend to, of course, but when they're there, they actually bite someone. So obviously Aquinas either knew of this or had experienced it or something. <clears throat> but what does he say? Well, it's not the fish that's the cause, it's the ocean. And it's capital O in this case. There are two uses of the word ocean. One is capitalized. That does not mean that one should not become adept at ducking. We don't have to receive every blow that the world offers us. You don't have to take every arrow into our flesh. No one can change the course of his arrows. <clears throat> that ties in with, with the last poem in, in which he said that the blemish on, his, on God's body was all the hatred and cruelty in the world. And that was an infinitesimally small amount of what the universe is. Yes. And so you can duck. <laughs> yes, thank you. And you ought to. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because too often when you're left braining your way through the world, all you see is the disappointment and the hostility and the horror. I love the way you put that when you're left braining your way through the world. Exactly. We, 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 if we get trapped in our left brains, oh, what a pain, what an anguish. Yeah. That's why I'm doing jigsaw puzzles these days. <laughs> Good for you, dear. I'm sure it's very relaxing. Well, it 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 takes away the left brain. Yeah. I have to jump in here and say something about all this left right brain discussion because I feel like you're throwing out the left brain with the bathwater and sometimes your left brain can be helpful in leading yourself to a space where you can be with your right brain or with a more heart-centered way. Sometimes things are so difficult and painful that you have to use your, your left brain to kind of trick yourself into a right brain space. For instance, when we were talking earlier about forgiveness and um, you know it being difficult to forgive unforgivable seemingly unforgivable people and it, it it just made me think of something i learned decades ago and i don't remember from whom but i you know i used it a lot then and i still use it 
in situations like that where I'm trying to. It's nine o'clock. Oops, there's Fiona. Um, I'm trying to sort of reconcile a situation like that, you know, forgiving somebody who seems unworthy of forgiveness. And the, the, the thing is, the trick is, and this is a left brain thing, I think, is what is my part in this? And that's, you know, it's obvious that that can be helpful if you're dealing with like a personal situation or a one-on-one -on -one relationship. Um, you know, instead of going, you know, the person ruining my life, you say, well, I feel like my life is being ruined and this person is involved, but what is my part in this? And it's not to accept, take all the blame. It's not that. It's to step back and see, indeed, what is my part in this? And I think that that, that, that also um, translates to these huge problems in the world and these people like, you know, political people like Beverly was mentioning. Um, you know, if, if we don't like a certain politician or, or elected official and they do horrible things and they cause all this damage, they're not they're not acting in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. And if you if I ask myself, well, what is my part in this boy? Then you have to look at how did this person get to this place? And to say, oh, I have nothing to do with that. Yeah. Mm -mm. Not if everything is connected. And um, yeah. I think one thing, you know, I'm kind of going on and on here. But anyway, I just wanted no, to. This is great. This is great. And you're, you're right. It could be seen that throwing out the left brain is the throwing out the baby with the bath. Um, it's like those dreams I had recently. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> But you know, again, Aquinas, he's so very thoughtful. Uh, he, he addresses what, you're, what you just said. He said, the child blames others for their woes. There's no blaming others, like you said. What's my part in this? So he says, get adept at ducking. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Cindy, Sharda. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> well, it's a little bit after nine o'clock. Anything else from anyone? All right. Oh, beloved Lord, may our lives become a poem to thee. <clears throat> Om Amen. Om Amen. Om Amen. Anything else? Any final thoughts from anyone? All right, dears. Until next time, may you be safe. May you be healthy. May you be cheerful. May you have peace of mind. And may you go forward in the loving embrace of the Divine Presence. Until next time. Thank you so much, Shankara you. and everybody. It thank was you. wonderful. Thank you, Brother Shankara. Thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you, everyone. This was a wonderful discussion tonight. So many of us, I think we all participated. When, uh, we didn't hear from Liam, but I think everybody else was was shared this evening. So uh, Liam, maybe next time, eh? All right. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night.